Good evening, everyone. You're welcome to a pre-event interview session where we're going to be having some of the guests who are going to be present at the African Investment Immigration Virtual Expo 2020. Today, are we having four wonderful you know, guests on the show, all men, who will be talking about what you should expect from this expo. It promises to be an interesting time. We're not going to take so much of your time. But just to give you a peek, you know, a peek of what you need to see or what you're going to be having during the expo. We're going to be providing you with information on the right places to invest and the right countries that you need to put or gain your second citizenship through investment. This evening, I will be having the Honorable Minister, um, Peter, um, Charles Peter David, who will be talking to us about Grenada, a wonderful place you need to visit. I will also have with me Sam Hussein, who is the CEO of BLS Global, um, a company who is also like an expert in immigration. I will also have with me Muhammad Asari, who is the CEO of um, the Seventh Six Sense Development uh, in a company into who the company that tries to create properties across different places that you can invest in. And lastly, I will also have Mr. Idowu Olumide, who is the CEO of Brandly, an immigration expert or consultant based in Nigeria. They're all going to be telling us about what we should expect from this upcoming expo and why you really need to look at the opportunity of investing in Grenada. Okay, so without wasting so much time, my first question will be for Sam, um, who is the CEO, BLS Global. I would like to quickly ask, what motivated you to put in place a virtual expo for the African market? And what are people expected to get out of this virtual event? Is this the first of its kind? And how many have you had before? And what can they expect from you, Sam? I mean, good afternoon and good evening to everyone. Um, thank you very much, Linda. A wonderful question. Um, just to give you a brief background about BLS, our head office is in London. Um, we are market leaders when it comes to outlining the various residency and citizenship programs available for high net worth individuals and families, as well as immigration and businesses that can benefit from this um, space. Um, we've organized and hosted many events um, throughout Africa region, Middle East, um, India, uh, in cities like Joburg, Cape Town, Lagos, uh, Abuja, Mumbai, just to name a few. Um, we normally organize, obviously, uh, physical events. Uh, due to the COVID-19, we had to be innovative and forward thinking um, during the ease of the lockdown. And in some countries where there is um, still a severe lockdown. And um, in doing so, we felt of doing a virtual expo. We find it worth families, and immigration agents can obtain information live through their desktops. However, prior to deciding on the African Investment Immigration Virtual Expo, we've been doing a number of webinars and we realized um, with these online platforms, we're able to reach a bigger and wider audience than we possibly able to do at a physical event due to the catchment area and the restrictions that we might face. Um, while doing these webinars, we noticed a high amount of registrations from the African region, especially Nigeria, Ghana, Namibia, South Africa, Egypt, and a few other continents. With the online platform, we realized that we can get a bigger audience and we can give a better insight in regards to how these residency and solutions can provide a better future and an alternative gateway for, for the migration need. And so, you know, that was one of our prime motivations. We felt the audience is there. Um, it's the right time at the right place to have the virtual um, expo. Thank you so much, Sam, for that question. I think you have really, you've done really well. Thank you. So my next question will go to the, will go to Honorable Peter David, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Minister of Labor. I would like to find out what initiatives is the government of Grenada undertaking to develop the relationship between Nigeria and Africa as a whole? What do you have in mind for us? Well, first of all, let me thank BLS for having me here and thank you for uh, having us in the Caribbean. Now, in recent years, uh, we have sought to deepen these relationships at both a political and at a financial economic level. We, at the political level, I've had the, uh, 
the, the contacts at the United Nations. We have a group called AFCA, which is a coordination between Africa and the Caribbean. Uh, Grenada has, has, is, is proud to play a leading role in that. We've established a, a CARICOM. CARICOM is the all of the Caribbean states coming together in an organization called CARICOM. We have, a, a, have established an office in, in Kenya. We are establishing consulates and hope to establish consulates throughout Africa. We have embassies uh, planned to be established in Africa. So we have a number of initiatives with Africa as a whole, and certainly Nigeria is one of those countries that play a leading part, is one of the, the leaders, financial and economic giants in, in Africa, and therefore all of these are focused on, on Nigeria and other African countries. So other initi our initiatives are political, they are diplomatic, in addition to, 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 to economic, because we are also seeking to deepen trade links. You would see, uh, if you look at the map closely and you look behind me, there's a map of the Caribbean and Africa, we're quite close, but unfortunately, the links we have between us, the trade links, the air links, the tourism links are all very weak at the moment because it is easier for me to get to London than it is for me to get to, to, to Ghana, which is just across the sea from Grenada. So, uh, the initiatives are, as I said, we are trying to establish deepen the political links. We are trying to establish more uh, diplomatic, more uh, uh, diplomatic outposts in Africa, and we are we are quite uh, 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 happy at the idea of you having this discussion so that we can have more people-to-people -people contacts and have more citizens who are citizens of Africa and citizens of Grenada, citizens of the Caribbean. So. This initiative here with BLS is one that we take uh, very seriously, and I want to really thank all of you for having us uh, on board in this, in this effort. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You have actually done very well with the question, which brings me to my next question. You know, you talked a bit about Africa being next door. You've also talked about Africa also developing really fast and Nigeria being a very huge, big market for foreign investment. And now we're looking at why is Grenada an attractive destination for foreign direct investment for African HNI individual family and businesses? What do you think they, they stand to gain or expect if they do decide to come and invest in Grenada? First, we have a very stable uh, uh, economic environment. We've experienced growth in the last several years of, of steady economic growth. We have a very stable economy. We have a currency that is the Eastern Caribbean currency, very stable currency. Uh, and, and we also have a very predictable judicial environment. We have a history as a British uh, colonial territory, no independence since 1974, but we've inherited much of the, the British judicial system. The Privy Council remains our, 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 our highest court, court of appeal. Uh, so we have a very stable environment. In addition to that, a very stable political environment. Uh, we have elections every five years, we have small transitions. So we have a very stable political environment in addition to a very stable social environment with Grenada being one of the, 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 the lowest crime rates in this part of the world. So there's stability in several respects with respect to investors who want to come. In addition to that, because we rely so much on foreign direct investment, uh, we have a very uh, attractive uh, incentive uh, framework, a uh, regime for persons coming into the country. So you'd find investments, particularly in tourism, uh, being very, very well treated. You have investments in IT, investments in several sectors are, are very attractive for us. We have the, uh, in terms of alternative energy, uh, Nigeria is a country, a very uh, rich energy, en energy rich country. Uh, they have very good relations with Trinidad and Tobago, which is just south of the Grenada border. Trinidad and Nigeria have had historic links. The president of Nigeria visited uh, several years ago. So there is a lot that a Nigerian investor or an African investor, for that matter, can see in Grenada that will, he will say, aha, uh -huh, this is a place I would like to invest in. And certainly we in the Caribbean who are seeking foreign direct investment, who want foreign direct investment as part of a development, particularly in tourism, alternative energies, and some of the things I mentioned, will certainly find a way to make it attractive to them. And um, the good thing is, once you get a foothold in Grenada, you have the entire region. You have 15 CARICOM countries that you can invest in. You have easy access to the United States. Miami is three hours away. New York is, is four hours away. So there is a lot 
that an African and Nigerian may find uh, good in Grenada. But when you when you attend the, the webinar, you'll get much more of that uh, as part of the menu at that meeting. I strongly believe you're very passionate about Grenada. Like extremely it's, passionate, it's, it's, couldn't be more you're, passionate. <laughs> you're definitely going to be very convincing to anyone to make sure they come. <laughs> I am. You know, just to digress a bit, I, I was able to go online to check around to see what Grenada looks like. And I was thrilled with how beautiful it looked. And I told Sam that I was going to definitely make sure that I put it in, that myself and Olumide and Sam should have a trip to Grenada just to be sure that everything you're saying is true. And that Absolutely. When we come back, so, that, Absolutely. so that when we come back, we become the real Grenada ambassadors telling people we went there, it was perfect, it was fine, it was beautiful, and you got to go there. So you have to come and I, I, I look forward to that. Look forward to welcoming you here uh, uh, as soon as you can get over. Once COVID opens up, I expect to see you flying in. Myself and Sam and the Lumi, they were definitely going to fly in. So that brings me to my next question. You know, So one of the parts of investment is definitely via the Grenada Citizenship Program. Now, how does this compare to other Grenada Caribbean Citizenship Programs and why is this one better? Well, you know, I, I like to call, and I think I think I was quoted some time ago in Forbes saying that Grenada CBI program is, is a Ferrari of CBI programs. And I say that, I don't say that lightly. I, I really mean it. Not only because of Grenada. And, and Grenada, for me, I mean, one of the things I, I, I find fascinating about Grenada, you're right, the size, we are 110,000 people just under. Um, but we back above uh, 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 we box above our weight sometimes. We have a university here, St. George's University. St. George's University trains 1% of medical doctors in the United States. It tells you the kind of, uh, and many African students uh, attend St. George's University. But why is CBI, our CBI program uh, uh, so effective? One is our E2 treaty. And you'll hear a lot more about that when you attend the webinar. Our E2 treaty arrangements with the United States, where somebody becoming a citizen of Grenada through CBI or any other means will have access to invest in and, and, and reside in the United States with, with the individuals and their families. So uh, our E2 treaty arrangement makes us unique in the region. Then the fact of the, the integrity of our passport. Our passport is seen as one of the best passports because of the fact that we pay particular attention to our due diligence process. We ensure that when you cross the border, and as foreign minister, I, I visit many countries throughout the year. When I present a Grenada passport, I'm presenting a passport that that border inspector knows is a passport with integrity. Again, that is another reason why our, our CBI program is, is so well. In addition to that, the importance of CBI to our economy makes us pay particular attention to incentivize in the program. We have a family-based program, so, so people come, can come with their families, and you'll hear a lot about that. But we, because CBI is one of the pillars, seen as one of the pillars, our uh, a citizenship by investment program is seen as one of our economic pillars, and therefore, we pay particular attention to attracting families and attracting uh, the best investors that we can in, 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 in to Grenada. So you have actually spoken very well, but you know you mentioned a bit about my next question, which I would like you to just quickly you know talk about. You said something about um, um, Forbes, you know, had just recently published Grenada being the Ferrari for second citizenship. You know, why is that? And you know, why would Forbes take time to talk about your city, despite the fact that you just you know houses 110 people? There must be some things that they have seen that makes you guys stand out. I think it's the stability, stability of Grenada, of course. When somebody is looking at the CBI program, you not only look at the CBI program, you look at the country in which the CBI program uh, is based. And again, Forbes would look at Grenada, look at the stability, the social stability, the political stability, the historic stability of the country. They would also look at the, the qualities that the, the, the CBI program has. In addition to the fact that we pay a large to a large, uh, we pay much attention to efficiency in our CBI program. We want to ensure that while we have a solid CBI program, there's efficiency because it makes no sense having a, a, a Ferrari if you can't service a Ferrari, if you can't get a Ferrari when you want to buy it, if you can't get it quickly. So we ensure that all of the things that make the 
fast, but good, are, are dealt with. So we have a CBI unit that is quite efficient, gets you there in good time. We have a CBI unit that pays attention to due diligence so that you know when you get a passport, the other person who has a passport is as, has as much integrity as you do. The passport has as much integrity as the person. So all of these things leads a leading magazine to quote me when I say the Ferrari. And I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't say that lightly, we say it because and that is why we have persons uh, uh, who are interested in, the, in, the, in, in, in Grenada who are deep integrity and who are, are investors who any country would like to have. And Grenada, 110,000 people would love to have them. I am actually really getting very curious on how I'm going to have this second citizenship. Not because that's my, anything, that's because my intention, to get you to Grenada. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I have one more question before we take sure. questions across sure. the board and then the final note. Um, so Grenada has a strict due diligence process, you know, for selecting developers for the CBI program. Um, why was Range Development selected as the go-to company to help you do that? You know, we do due diligence on persons who become citizens, but we also do very deep due diligence on persons who become investors in Grenada as part of our CBI program. As everyone here is well aware, there's a section 11 where you have to choose the development range. It's very important to Grenada for several reasons. One, the range project we see as a premier project for Grenada. The Six Senses project and other projects that range are coming with are very important. But I think importantly for us in choosing range was the fact that when we visited St. Kitts, when I visit St. Kitts, when I visit Dominica, I see at hotels that were developed by range in, 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 in St. Kitts. I, I go to the Park Hyatt, when I go to Dominica, I stay at Kempensky. And for that, we are, we were, in fact, we are quite jealous of other countries in the region who are range. So we had to go out. In fact, I personally had to go out, seek out range, speak to Mr. Asaria, and we were quite happy that range chose Grenada. And uh, we, we, we were ensure that range is credible, that the projects they did were developed. You know, the world is littered with persons who make promises. The world and the Caribbean is littered with persons who come and say, we will do this, we will do that. You, you've seen it, I'm sure you've seen it yourself. But with range, we are satisfied based on the experience in other parts of the Caribbean and based on our, our, on our experience up until now in Grenada, because soon we'll have that new hotel coming on stream, the Sixth Sense, and we have other hotels. And I do hope that range becomes a long-term partner, but that also persons seeking to become citizens, second citizens, choose Grenada, choose range, and choose and, and make a decision that puts in their hand a Ferrari the Grenada passport. So for Forest Range is not just an investor, it's a long-term partner for the development of the country. And I do say that, that Africa and Africans and the African continent, we want not only to develop economic ties, but to develop the people-to-people -people ties that would, that would cause us to have long-term relationship in the developmental interests of both Africa, the Caribbean, and in particular Grenada. So this definitely brings me to the floor to the great man everyone has been talking about this evening, Mohamed Asari. So my next question is for you. I, I really don't think I need to ask you any more questions because with the way, um, you know, the Honorable Charles Peter David has spoken about you, I'm convinced, I'm strongly convinced that there's nothing you cannot do. And there's absolutely that everything is within your control and you're going to do a good job. But for the benefit of those who probably haven't had any dealings with your company and your capability, um, my question will be, you have a track record in delivering completed development via you know, the citizenship program. What motivated you and Rain Development to invest in Grenada and also develop the shortly, the Six Cent Las Vegas you know, Hotel and then properties? Please, the floor is yours, Mohammed. Thank you so much, Linda, for your kind introduction. And also thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for the very kind words that you uh, expressed about myself and my company um, today. Um, the sentiments are, are mutual and obviously reciprocated. Um, and really it was in a large part, uh, Minister David, why we made the decision to invest in Grenada. So we've been active in the Caribbean since 2012. Um, we were first enticed by the lovely island of St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, where we opened the Park Hyatt St. Kitts at the end of 2017. 
Um, that was our first completed citizenship project in the Caribbean. Condé Nast put that as one of the top 100 hotels in the world. CNN is the best new hotel in the Caribbean. And then our journey took us to the lovely sister island of Dominica, where we opened the Kempinski at the end of 2019 to similar reviews from Bloomberg and the Wall Street Journal. And then it was the end of 2018 when Minister David came to visit us in Dubai. And we were trying to contemplate where we would be investing next. And Minister David gave such glowing reviews of Domini of Grenada that we had to really visit at the next available opportunity. Um, and within two weeks, I found myself in Grenada and I was truly amazed by three or four key things. First of all, was the respect of the rule of law. It's a country where the law is not a mere inconvenience, but something where it's respected, which gives investors comfort um, when they invest in an island, as well as a, a very strong set of investor-friendly legislation. Um, so, you know, not only for me, but investors across the world have their investment security, which is absolutely vital. The second, as Minister David touched upon, is the Ferrari of um, citizenship, which Grenada really has proved itself to be in the, in the recent months. Um, it has very wide visa-free travel, visa-free access to China, Schengen, UK, uh, most of Latin America, most of Asia. And when you combine that with the ability to live in the United States, that's really a very attractive proposition. Um, and I think the other thing that Minister David touched upon is not only is the country focused on citizenship by investment, but it has lots of other attributes. 1% of the world's doctors graduated from Grenada. That says a tremendous amount about the people, the infrastructure, and the emphasis placed on education on this wonderful island nation. And obviously, fourthly, when you're investing in a hotel, you need some of the most beautiful landscapes in the world and I do hope that you'll have a chance to visit Grenada in the coming weeks and months and take up the good minister's invitation. And you will really be able to see it for yourself. Not only does it have some of the most beautiful beaches, it has a mix of rainforest, it has a mix of wildlife. And it really, when it all comes together, is a very eclectic mix, which almost provides the perfect Caribbean holiday. So for hotel developers like myself, um, we were actually very fortunate in finding our site. Sunday Times put it as one of the top 10 beaches in the Caribbean. We signed up with Intercontinental Hotel Groups, which is now part of, uh, sorry, the Six Senses brand of Intercontinental Hotel Groups. And Six Senses is one of the, or has been named the leading hotel brand by Travel and Leisure for the past three years consecutively. So this will truly be a Caribbean icon. Um, and we are fully confident it will live up and surpass um, the reputation of the Park Hyatt and Kempinski, which we've completed. You have spoken really well, Mohammed. I'm definitely going to take up this offer. I really have to see those lovely beaches I saw online and, you know, the rainforest and stuff you guys are talking about. I love to travel and I will want to add Grenada to my list. Surely, once this COVID is over, I will be taking the next flight to my nearest location. Okay, so this brings me to the next question, you know. So what offerings do you have that sets your company apart and makes you better than the other developers? What should people look forward to and expect from your company? So Linda, that's a, that's a great question. And, you know, I can proudly say that we're the only company which is delivered in this space. So we've delivered not one, but two luxury five-star hotels. And we've done that in the last six years. And by the end of November, 2022, we'll make that a hat trick with the opening of the Six Senses Hotel in, in Grenada. And that really hasn't happened by accident because we're execution driven. Before we go out and we work with good partners like yourself and Sam and the, the immigration community and the legal community, we make sure that our projects are executable. Um, so, you know, I have a business partner, he's moved to Grenada, He's, an, he's a little bit of an elderly gentleman with four decades of construction experience under his belt. And he's proved he can build two of the finest hotels in the Caribbean. And he has designed an absolutely stunning hotel. Work will shortly recommence after the, the, COVID, um, after the COVID crisis caused a, a temporary halt. We will catch up the time. And by the end of November, 2022, 
the six senses will be open for business in a total of 27 or 28 months from a, from a standing start. And you know, for anywhere in the world, that is, a, that is an impressive timeline. And we've shown before that we can, we can deliver. We deliver to the highest quality. And that is very important to you because not only are you looking for that Ferrari of second citizenship, you're also looking for a very viable investment um, because your exit depends on the, the product being of a certain standard, which drives tourism, which drives investment yield, which will provide you the ability to exit after the mandatory five-year holding period that the government prescribes. So not only, I mean, this project in, in Grenada, it's in, a, in an area called La Sagesse, which, uh, which means wisdom in French. Um, and really it's on a beautiful, uh, quiet, secret location. It's a hundred rooms spread out over 28 acres. 30 something swimming pools are integrated into the hotel's design. There's no big block. It's very low density. We're only building on 20% of the land. It's integrated within to the environment. But all the features I've just described make it the absolutely perfect retreat for a luxury traveler in the post COVID area. Because it's not about social distancing, it's about natural distancing. It's so spread out that, you know, if you want to meet people, yes, there's places to congregate. But if you don't, no one is going to find you in your little area of seclusion um, within, this, within this hotel. And that is really what's going to drive the yield and the revenue um, because the way the hotel has been designed and built. Thank you very much. Um, I really want to thank Sam for bringing about this um, webinar and this virtual program. It, uh, participants will really learn from the experts and they will hear the real, the, the real value of what they are going into. And they, they should, it's something that should be taken serious. And we, we pray that Sam will help us to do more of this so that they will have a, a platform to allay up their fears and come on the same page with the real people in the, in the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending this free event you know, interview. I have had a good time learning a lot from every one of you concerning the Hotel Mohammed, concerning this lovely, amazing place I'm going to visit very soon. Honorable Minister, thank you for telling me a lot about Grenada. I never really knew Grenada until this. So you can imagine the amount of people in Nigeria that are going to be hearing about Grenada for the first time and wondering, Really? Is it this beautiful? And this together has been amazing. My name is Linda Swizzle. I work with Business Day.